But hey, there might be somebody here who enjoys astronomy. So, but after we did that, and, it, and it's okay because it's part of, uh, part of what Raphael was warning out about. And don't be sticking your nose in things when you better not stick your nose in. It turns out that Adam is a nose sticker. We will find out a little bit about that. And then the, uh, the, 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 the latter, approximately 60% of it, really is the crux and the heart of the thing in that. And uh, maybe some will find out where you came from. And uh, Raphael will find out where Adam came from. And we will all, at the end of the evening, be that much wiser. So, according to Milton. So, uh, I, I intend for you to uh, enjoy this. It's meant not to be a lecture. It's meant to be a, a performance of a piece of literature that has an enormous reputation of these days of less visited than it was in the past. So, Raphael has been talking, they, they believe, I see Raphael is sort of likes to eat and drink and you know, just be one of the guys. And, uh, and uh, let's, put, let's put Eve here just right now. And let's suppose that Adam's sitting there and they're all helping themselves to food back. And I suppose if any of you are just dying of thirst and hunger during this recitation, I hereby give you permission to look back and help yourself. It will not disturb you. And I hope it doesn't disturb anybody else because it's in the spirit of uh, eat, drink, and humanity. It certainly would be uh, paradise at that point. And uh, so here they have been sitting, talking, and Adam has been listening, and um, Eve has been listening, and largely. So Charlie left his voice that he a while thought him up still speaking, still stood fixed to hear, then as new made, thus gratefully replied, O oh God, thanks sufficient or what reckon as equal have I to render the divine historian who thus largely has to lay the thirst I had of knowledge and but save this friendly condescension to relate things else by me unsearchable. Now heard with wonder, but delight, and as is due, with glory attributed to the high being. But something yet, a doubt remains, which only thy solution can resolve. When I behold this goodly frame, this world of heaven and earth consisting, and compute their magnitudes, this, this earth, Or my other 
with loneliness majestic from her seat, and grace that one who saw to wish her stay, rose and went forth among her fruits and flowers to visit how they prospered, bud and bloom, her mercy. They had her coming strumming and touched by her fair tendons, gladly or smiling. Yet when she knocked as not with such discourse, Delight, or not capable of her ear of what was high. Such pleasure she deserved. Adam would be, she so loved it. Her husband she preferred before the she preferred to ask before the angel, and of him to ask chose rather. He he she knew would interpose grateful digressions and excel high disputes. And here's the, here in a simple thing is the crux of the whole thing, his conjugal caresses. From his lip, not words alone, he used her. Oh, when we now such a very loving creature in our form, with goddess-like demeanor, forth she went, not unattended, for on her as queen, a pomp of winning graces waited still, and from about her, Shot darts of desire <laughs> into all eyes, which were still in sight. And Raphael thus to Adam's belt proposed, benevolent and facile, thus began. <clears throat> to ask or search, I blame thee not. For heaven is as the book of God before thee set, wherein to read his wondrous works and learn the seasons, hours, and days, and months, and years. This to attain, whether heaven moves or earth, imports not with one recognize. The rest, the man or angel, could great architect, did wisely to conceal and not that bulge of secrets to be scanned by those who ought rather admire. But if they list, to try conjecture, he, his fabric of the heavens, hath left to their disputes, perhaps to wound his laughter at their quaint opinion, why hereafter, when, and then now you've got a picture of a bunch of people sitting around the table arguing about math, math. physics, it, it, his quaint, perhaps quaint opinion, why they just laughter at their Quaint opinions by director, when they come to model heaven, calculate the stars, and they come to model heaven and calculate the stars, how they will wheel the mighty frame, how build, unbuild, contrive the same appearances, how gird the sphere with center and with center, scribble or cycles and epicycle, orb and orb. Already by thy reasoning, this I guess, and art to lead thy offspring, and supposes that bodies white and greater should not serve the less yet, the less not right, nor heaven such journeys run, worth sitting still, when she alone receives the benefit. Ah, consider first that great or bright confers not excellence. The earth, though in comparison of heaven, so small or wisdom. May a solid good contain more plenty than the sun that barren shines, whose virtue on itself works no effect, but on the fruitful earth. There, first receive his beings on active elves, their bigger fine. Or, their beings on active elves, their bigger fine. Yet not to earth, I've always been a luminary 
his officials. But to thee, earth's heaven, and for the heaven's wide circle, let us speak the Maker's high magnificence, who built so spacious, and his line stretched out so far, that man may know he dwells not in his own, an edifice too large for him to fill, large in a small partition. And the rest are made for uses to his Lord, that's known. The swiftness of the sun, at the view, uh, to his, the swiftness of the circles, the numbers of the swiftness of those circles attribute, though numberless, to his omnipotence. And for the heavens wide circuit that is speaking in his life. I think I've done that already, haven't I? Well, it's, it's very clear to hear it again. The swiftness of those circles attribute, though numberless, to his omnipotence, who two corporeal substances could add, speed almost spiritual. Me, thou thinks not slow. Who since the morning hour set up from heaven where God resides, and ere midday arrive in e distance inexpressible by wonders that have made. But this I urge, admitting motions in the heavens, to show in valid that which we do not move. Not that I so affirm, though so it seem to thee who has thy dwelling here on earth, God to remove his ways from human sense, place heaven from earth so far. That earthly sight, if it presume, might err in things too high and no advantage gain. But eh? what if the sun be centered to the world? And other stars, by his attractive virtue and their own inside the dance about him, bury his one, their wandering course, not high, nor low, to them again progressive, retrograde, or standing still, in six planets, in six dull seeds. And what if seventh to these, the planet Earth, so steadfast motion seen, insensibly three different motions move, which else to seven spheres I must describe, um, move contrary with pure abilities, or save the sun his labor, and that swift nocturnal and diagonal rhomb, I suppose, the visible else above all stars, the wheel day and night, which needs not thy beauty, in earth, the industrious of herself, fetch day traveling east, and with her part averse from the sun's beam, meet night, meet the uh, night, her other parts meet night, that's the side of it, because there's the sun over there. Meet my her other parts still luminous by his rays. And what if that light, bing, sent from her through the wide transpicuous air to the terrestrial moon, be as a star, bing, enlightening her by day as she by night is earth. Reciprocal. If lands be there, fields and inhabitants, her spot thou seest as clouds. You all look up on a full moon and see the clouds in the moon. The land and the spots thou seest as clouds, and clouds may rain, and rain produce food, and rain produce fruits. The spots thou seest as clouds, and clouds, and clouds may rain, and rain produce fruits of the salt and soil, for some to eat a lot of them. And other suns, perhaps, with their attendant moons thou wilt describe, communicating male and female life. Which great, which two great sexes animate the world? Here we come again to the main thing. It's all sex. Which two great sexes animate the world? Stored in each orb, perhaps in some that live. For such vast room in nature, unpossessed by living soul. For such vast room in nature, unpossessed by living soul. Desert and desolate, only to shine, yet scarce to come. Each orb a glimpse of light conveys so far down to this habitable which turns light back to the earth uh, is obvious to these things. But now we're getting to them. Whether thus these things or whether or not, whether the sun predominant in heaven rise on the earth or earth rise on the sun, he from the east is flaming road begin, or she from west her silent course advance to the inner place of the face and stilly sleeps on her soft axle as she paces and, 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 and as she paces even and bears the 
and soft with the smooth air or long. Solicit not thy thoughts with matters hid. Lead them to God above. Him serve and fear. Of other creatures as him pleases best. Of other creatures as he pleases best. Okay. Of other, lead them to God above. Him serve and fear. Of other creatures as he pleases best. Wherever he place. Wherever he place. Let God, let him dispose. Uh, and him dispose. Oh, somebody tell me. Joy, Joy Ball, yes. Joy. Joy Ball, because he would Joy Ball and what he gives to be this paradise, I read this to you, this paradise and thy fair Eve. Thy fair Eve. Be lonely wise, think only what concerns thee and thy be. Dream not of other worlds where creatures there live in what state, condition, or degree. Contented that thus far hath been revealed, not of earth only, but of highest heaven. Who thus have? Hmm? Yeah. Clearly the to whom thus have and clear the love of the body. Did it say whether the city was coming? No. Clear the dog. Oh, how fully hast thou satisfied the pure intelligence of heaven and angels serene, and freed from intricacies taught to live the easiest day, nor with perplexing thoughts to interrupt the sweep of life from which God has been well far off all anxious cares, and not molest us unless we ourselves seek them with wandering thoughts and notions vain. For apt the mind of fancy is to roll. For at the mind of fancy is to roll. Roll what? Uncheck. Just check and see if you will. At the mind of fancy is to roll. Uncheck. And unprovoked is no end till worn or by uh, an experienced thought. She learned that not to know at large a thing is remote from use, obscure and sudden, but to know that which before us lies in daily life. Is the prime wisdom. What is more, is few or emptiness or far impertinence, and renders the renders her in that which most concerns, unpracticed, unprepared, and still to seek. Therefore, this is all long preamble for Adam to get to this point. Therefore, because he's been listening to a lot of Well, actually about 2,000 lines. Therefore, from this high pitch, let us descend the lower flood and talk of things at hand. Useful. I mean, whence happily mention may arise, or something not unseasonable to ask. And again, you see, there's the word. Because what, is, what, is, what might be unseasonable to ask? Well, he just told Adam what was unseasonable. Don't go sticking your nose in things that are too high for you. High pitch over and talk of things that have been useful. What's happening? Mention may arise with something that is not seasonable to ask by, by, by or thy wanted favored dame. Uh, thee I have heard relating what was done ere my remembrance. Now here you relate my story, which perhaps thou hast not heard. And day is not yet spent till then thou seest how suddenly to detain thee, my divine. Uh, inviting me to hear what I relate, and so we can be fond were it not an hope that I reply. For a while I sit with thee, I uh, can see my mother, he knows how to fly. For a while I sit with thee, and see, uh, for a while I sit with thee, I see in heaven, and sweeter by this closest to my ear, than fruit of palm tree, pleasantness, and thirst for hunger and gold, from labor at the hour of sleep. They satiate and soon fill, both us, but thy words with grace divine in thee bring to their sweetness no satiate. To whom as at to whom they are able uh, thus far, 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 th
mile. Who was walking around so you had a mile? Nor are thy lips on graceful side. No, 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 is that? Yeah. Nor are thy lips on graceful side of man, nor tongue in open. For God on thee abundantly, his gifts hath also bore, inward and outward both, his image fair. Speaking or new, all comeliness and grace attends thee, and each word, each motion forms. Nor must think we in heaven of thee on earth than of our fellow servants, and inquire gladly into the ways of God with man. For God we see hath honored thee and set on man his equal law. Say therefore on, for I that day was absent as befell, on a voyage uncouth and obscure, far on excursion toward the gates of hell. In all my many performances, I always seem to have hell being awfully close to where you're sitting now. <laughs> so it gets warm, just move. Far on excursion toward the gates of hell. Above gates of hell, um, squared in squared in full full region, such squared in full region, such but squared in full region, such I yeah, squared in full region, such command we have, but see that none thence issue forth a spy or enemy while God was in his work. And the particular word refers back to the creation of the universe, those seven days of creation while God was in his work, lest he incense with such eruption bold destruction with creation might have mixed. Not that they durst attempt, not that they durst without his leave attempt, but us, he, God, sends upon his high behests uh, uh, for state as sovereign king and to endure our prompt obedience. You see, even angels have to go through training. Do our prompt obedience. Fast we found, fast shut the dismal gates and barricaded strong. But long ere our approaching heard within noise other than the sound of dance or song, torment, loud lament, and furious rage. And now I have been, you know, having a little bit of fun with the text here, but actually the image here is sentient beings suffering un, unspeakable, unbelievable. That's what's, that is the noise that these angels are hearing. So, please God pardon me, but that is what's coming out of the clip. But, then glad we return up to the coast of life, as said of thee, such we have judged. But, thy relation now, for I attend, please the Bibles, no less than thou with me. So speak to God like power, and thus I will suffer. For man to tell how human life began is hard. For who himself beginning knew? No. No. Desire with me still longer to converse with you. As you wait, I'm going to write down and you won't be able to see me. Well, that's all I can do. That's part of the action. As, uh, as you wake from soundest sleep, no, wait a minute, how's it going to come out? No, 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 no. I think that's what I've done. The man to tell him, even when he gets out of the room, he's not going to be able to be so long as he can verse it. As you wake, from soundest sleep, soft on the flowery herb I found me laid in balmy sweat, which with his beams the sun soon dried, and on the reeking moisture fed. Straight toward heaven my wondering eyes I turned, and gazed a while at the ample sky, till raised by quick instinctive motion, up I sprung as thither were endeavoring, and up. Bought me round I saw a hill, dale, and shady, 
woods and sunny plain and liquid laps of murmuring stream. Bobby Thee's creature, Bill, Moon, Ah, Birds on the branches warm. All things smile with fragrance and with joy in my heart. Myself, I then to the hotel, did my little survey, and sometimes went, and sometimes ran the subtle joy as lively bigger man. But who I was, or where, or from what cause, mm -hmm. not to, to speak I tried, and forthwith. Stay. My tongue obeyed, and readily could name what Ere I saw. Thou sun, said I, fair light, and thou enlightened earth, so fresh and gay, ye hills and vales, ye rivers, woods, and plains. Oh, and ye, that little moon, fair creatures tell, tell me the song. How came I thus? How here? Not of myself, of some great thing. Of course, it wasn't people at that point. I was just pointing to them. He was like, what's the man as a man? I cried out, how you saw, how came I thus out here? Not of myself, of some great maker there. Tell me, how may I know him? How adore from whom I have that I both move and live and feel that I am happier than I know? And of course, you know what happens. You know the silence. I can't and we move around, huh? but he doesn't hear the answer to his question. Okay. Uh, uh, thus I called and strayed, I knew not whither, for where I first <coughs> grew air and first beheld this happy light, when answer none returned, on the green shady bank, profuse of flowers, pensive, I sat me down. Their gentle sleep first found me, and with soft oppression seized my drowsy sense. Untroubled though I thought I then was passing to my former state, insensible and forthwith to dissolve when suddenly stood at my head a dream whose inward apparition gently moved my fancy to believe I yet had been and lived. One came for a shape divine and said, and here's where we read James Earl Jones. He said, My mansion was to be man, wise first man of men, innumerable, for a first father. Oh, by thee I come, thy God, to the garden of bliss, I see. So say, he took me raised, mind you, of course, this is all in his head. He took me raised that over fields and waters, with our steps, smooth, uh, fields and waters, smooth sliding with our steps. Last led me up a woody mountain whose high top was, let me put them on that, a woody mountain whose high top was, and a circuit high enclosed with hideous trees, and with walks and mountains, and what I saw of earth before scarce the present seen. Each tree loaded with fairest fruits which hung to the eye tenderly, stirred in me some appetite that the pluck and take. Whereas, whereas I waked and found before my eyes all oh, as the dream had widely shed, for here had new begun my wandering, had not he who was my guide up hither from among the trees appeared, rejoicing up with awe and admiration at his feet. Submiss. He heard. Now this is real time. This is not a dream. This is a real time. He heard me. And whom thou, whom thou sought, he heard me. And whom thou sought, I am. I wonder if that's the origin of the famous thing of the great I am. It's more than fair as well as the I am. Some caveman said, I oh, am! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, many of them. I, 
said mild data. Yeah. <laughs> Author of all this thou seest, Author of all this thou seest, Above, around, about, the world beneath. This paradise I give thee, Count it mine, to till it keep, And of the fruit to eat. Of every tree that in the garden grows, Eat freely, with glad heart, Fear here no good, But of the tree whose operation works, Brings knowledge of good and ill, which I have set the pledge of thy obedience and thy faith amidst the garden, by the tree of life. Remember what I warn thee: shun to taste, or shun the bitter consequence. For know, the day thou eats thereof, my soul command transgress. What calls thou solitude? Is not the earth the various living creatures and the air be punished? Have all these at thy command? Knowest thou not of their language and their ways? They also know and reason not contemptibly. With these by the pastime and their rule, thy realm is large. So state the universal word and seem so ordered. I, with leave of speech of the Lord and humble deprecation, what? No, 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 no. Don't let my words offend me, Heavenly Father. Be propitious while I speak. Hast thou not made me hear thy substitute? And these inferior far beneath thyself? Among unequals, what society can say? What harmony or true delight? Which must be mutual and in proportion new, given and received? Which must be mutual? in proportion to you, given and received, but in disparity, the one intense, the other still in this, cannot well serve the life. 
supervisor by seeing through and keeping us alive. A fellowship I speak, such as I see, didn't participate. All rational delight wherein the brute cannot be human counsel. They rejoice each with their company. Why that lioness so fitly then in pairs thou hast combined? Much less can bird with beast or fish with fowl so well, nor with a ox to any. Worse then can man with beast and beast of all. To whom to whom uh, somebody, to whom God, but uh, to whom the Almighty to whom the Almighty answered. Not this place. Uh, ha, ha, ha! Ah, uh, and a nice and subtle happiness I see thou to thyself proposest in the choice of thy associates and will taste no pleasure. No, I can only just have to have means for looking to God's mouth to taste no pleasure. Venison, hmm. perhaps. <laughs> or maybe something else. God forbid it would be best reality. No! Such a thought would never occur. But still, he said, the only sin that would be, there is no sin, just don't touch the pain, do anything else. Well, and just because of the, the diseased imagination that contemporary people bring to that innocent mind, forgive me, all oh, please. You taste no pleasure, no in pleasure, something to Well, what thinks thou then of me in this mind state? Seem I to be sufficiently possessed of happiness or not, who am alone from all eternity? For none I find. Second to me, or like, <laughs> equal much less. How have I then with whom to hold converse, save with the creatures which I made, and those to me inferior, infinite descents beneath what other creatures are to me? He sits. I lowly answer. To attain the height and depth of thy eternal ways, and human thought can short supreme of things. Thou and thyself art perfect, and in thee is no deficiency found. Not so is man, but my degree, the cause of his desire, by conversation with his life to help, or solace his defects. No need that thou shouldst profit, already infinite, and through all numbers absolute for one. But man, by number, is to manifest his single imperfection, in unity defective, which requires collateral love and dearest family. Thou in thy secrecy, although alone, best with thyself a company, seeks not social communication. Yet so pleased can this raise thy creature to what height thou wilt of meaning or coming in the I by the person cannot please a rightful tone or in their way complacence on the company to thou. Yeah. Thus I am bold and thus, that's what I feel I am bold and stay and free to lose from this of that acceptance of my which gave me this answer of the gracious voice to God. I think we can take it that Adam, not Rashi's, is the first act. He may be Rashi, no, actually Rashi, but he was a good. So Adam was, had to be the first act. He was a good guy, Adam's a man. Okay, no worry. Why? <clears throat> thus far, thus far to try the Adam I was pleased. Finally, knowing not the beasts of all this, all this negative, but of thyself, expressing well the spirit within be free, my image, not a part of the root, whose fellowship, therefore, unmeet for thee. Good reason was thou freely shouldst dislike, and be so minded still. I, ere thou spakes, knew it not good for man to be alone, and no such company as there thou sawest pretended me. <laughs> for trial of me, thou, to see how thou couldst judge of fit and meet. Now, here comes to me the most important line in the whole play, or I should say it's a precursor line, but by the fact it leads inevitably to the central issue of the whole of the whole poem, all 10,565 But next time Green will please be assured. Thy likeness, thy fit help, thy other self, 
novel picture by exactly to thy heart's desire. To be quite Be ended, or I have heard no more, for now my earthly, by his heavenly overpowered, which it had long stood under, strained to the height of that celestial power in the sublime. As with an object that excels the sense, jazzled and spent, sunk down and sought repair of sleep, which instantly fell on me, called by nature as in a, and closed my eyes. My eyes were closed, but open left the cell of fancy, my internal sight, by which abstract is in a trance, he thought I saw, then sleeping where I lay. Yet some of the shapes still glorious before whom awake I stood, who, stooping, opened my left side and took from them a rib with cordial spirits warm and white blood streaming fresh. Wide was the wound, but suddenly with flesh filled up and healed. The rib! Infection with his hands, under his forming hands, a creature called man like, a different sense. So lovely fair that what seemed fair in all the world seemed not me or in her some love in her companion. And the look which from that I refused to see. From her air inspired the spirit of love and amorous delight. She disappeared and left me dark. I woke, finally, or forever to the floor of her laws, when out of hope, behold her, not far off, such as I saw her in adorned with what all earth or heaven could bestow to make her amiable. How she came, led by her heavenly maker, no one seen guiding by his voice, nor uninformed of nuptial sanctities in her dreams. Praise was in all her steps, heaven in her eyes, her every gesture, dignity and love. I overjoyed the God for her. For this turn hath made amends, thou hast fulfilled thy words, creator, bounteous and benign, giver of all things fair, but fair is this of all thy gifts, for in this I am now seen, bone of my bone, and flesh of my um, myself before me, um, woman is her name, of man expect, for this cause we shall forego father and mother and to his wife and dear, and they shall one heart, one soul. And now, thinking of election, what is it that is eternal about this? This soul. What is this soul going to be composed of? One flesh, one heart, one soul. She heard me once, and though divinely wrong, yet innocence and virgin modesty, her virtue and the conscience of her worth, which would be wooed and not but sought be won, not obvious, not obtrusive, but retired the more desirable, seeing me, was that was seeing me, I followed her. She what was on her knee, and with obsequious majesty approved my hated reason. I shall be put in much more law. It was the little person to walk from her. To the nuptial bower, I led her blushing like the land. The heavens and happy constellations on that hour shed her selectors. The earth gave signs of gratulation at each hill. 
Joyous though birds, fresh gales and gentle airs, whispered into the woods, and from their wings flung rolls, flung odors from the spicy shrubs, disporting till the amorous bird of night sung stars away, in haste, the evening star on his own top, the light of the bridal night. And I guess we'd be happy to the show. Thus I have told thee all my state and brought my story to the sum of earthly bliss, which I enjoy and must confess to find the all things else to light to be. But here, for other eyes, transported and beheld. And that was a five letter word touch. And just in order to sort of make the audience even clearer uh, by that uh, means. Sexual comments. Uh, here, passionate about commotion, strange, yet all enjoying themselves superior and unmoved. Here, only weak against the child of beauty's powerful glance, or nature failed in me, or left some part not proven of such object to sustain, or on her object to sustain, or on her object to sustain, or on her minimum. Or from my side seductive, but, but perhaps more than enough. At least on her we stole too much of one another. At least on her we stole too much of one another. In outward show, elaborate, of inward thus exactly, for well I understand uh, in the prime end of nature, in the words of the in the prime end of nature, her the inferior in the mind and inward faculties, which most excel, in awkward also were resembling less his image in me both and less expressing the uh, the character of that dominion given all other creatures. When I approach her loveliness, so absolute she seems that in herself complete so well to no know her own. That what she wills to do or say seems wisest, which roses, sweetest, best. All higher knowledge in her presence falls degraded. Wisdom in discourse with her loses this confidence, and my folly shows. Authority and reason on her weight, as one intended first, not after made occasion. One can conceive all greatness of mind and nobleness, her seat, build in her loveliness. And create an awe about her as a guard and place. Whom the angel with contracted brow accused not nature. She hath done her part, do thou but find, and be not diffident of wisdom. She deserts thee not when most thou needst to nigh by acting is that and she deserts thee not. And, and dismiss not her. She did Oh, well, let me start it again. So I know all the acting of this bit of it. Okay. And she's not nature. She will not be not diffident. And be not diffident of wisdom. She deserts thee not when most thou needst her nigh. By attributing over much to Seems less excellent, as thou thyself perceivest, throwing out his words like that then, and thou thyself perceivest, for what admirest thou? What transports thee so? An outside? Ah, fair no doubt, or worthy well, thy cherishing, thy honoring, and thy love, not thy subjection. Weigh with her thyself, then value. Oh, there's nothing profits more than self-esteem grounded on. There it is. Here we have it. Self esteem. The buzzword. Put it back into the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't finished my digression. It's all right. Don't give him anything. Well, of course. Hmm. Back to the task. Um, 
self-esteem grounded in just that right. Okay, good. Of that skill, the more thou knowest, the more will she acknowledge thee, her head, and to realities yield all her shows. Make so adorn for thy delight the more. And then here's the little kind of goes the other direction altogether. So all for that with reverence thou mayest love thy maid who sees when thou art seen least of all. And now we get down to it. Here we go. But if the sense of sexual intercourse of touch, what if the sense of touch? Whereby man is propagated, it seems such dear delight beyond all of it. Ah, think the same thou say, the cattle of each beast, which would not be to them made common and divulged if aught therein enjoyed, were worthy to subdue the soul of man and passion in him move. But higher than her society dies, love by this love's here. In loving God as well. Love still, in loving God as well. In passion not, where in true love consists of love. Love refines the thoughts, and heart refines Have the seed and reason, and has received in reason and is tradition. Is the scale by which to heavenly love, heavenly love thou makest the seven. Heavenly love. Hang on to that, hang on to that thought, heavenly love. A scale by which to heavenly love. The look at sin, not some yet carnal pleasure, for which cause among the beasts no mate for thee was found. To whom thus have uh, a match of And the other one show here at this point. Half a match of blood. Neither her outside forms so fair nor aught of procreation common to all times. Though higher of the genial bed by far, with mysterious reverence of me, so much delights me as her graceful eyes, her thousand decencies, her graceful eyes, her thousand decencies. What is that? Hmm? Oh, the thousand decencies that daily flow from all of her words and actions which the Love and sweet companions which declare unfair, union of heart and in us both one soul. Harmony to behold with wed and pair more greatly than harmonious sun to be evil. Yet these subject not, I am to be revealed what inward depths I feel. Not therefore foil, who meet with various objects from the sense, variously represented, and Yet free, approve the best and follow what I approve. To love, and now we get it down. To love, thou blamest me not. For love, thou sayest, leads up to God as both the way and God. Bear with me then, if lawful what I ask. Here's Adam sticking his nose in Bear with me then, if lawful what I ask. Love not the heavenly spirits. And how their love express they? By looks only? Do they mix the radiance? Virtual? Or immediate touch? A huge silence. But it's paradise to be like two and drop. The wounded angel with a smile that glowed celestial rosy red and love's proper hue answered. <coughs> let, <coughs> let it suffice thee that thou knowest us happy and without love no happy. Whatever pure thou in the body enjoys, and pure thou art created, we enjoy in eminence and obstacle find none of membrane, joint, or limb exclusive bar. Easier than air with air. If spirits embrace, total they mix, union of pure with pure desire. Yeah, but I can now. I think 
1740. And I can now no more. And I can now no more. The parting sun beyond the earth's green cape and burning vials is filled with sets. My signal can be part. Be strong. Live happy. And not die, first of all, who into love is to obey and keep his great command. Take heed, lest passion sway thy judgment to do aught which else free will but not admit. Thine and of all thy sons, the real or woe in thee is place. Beware! I am thy persevering will rejoice in all the words, in all the words. Stand fast. To stand or fall, free in thine own are detriment of light. Perfect within, no outward may be quiet, and all temptations to transgress, all temptations to transgress, repel. So saying, he arose, whom Adam thus followed with benediction, seems to pass, since to part, go heavenly guest, ethereal messenger, Send from whose sovereign goodness I adore, gentle to me and affable hath been thy condescension, and shall be honored ever with sacred memory. Thou to mankind be good and friendly still. And oft be tired. So pardon me. The angel of the heaven from the thick shade. Adam? To his bower. <laughs> and here note this book eight of Paradise Lost. Thank you.